Hello everybody, welcome to this video continuing my series looking at the mark scheme for question 5 on AQA English Language Paper 1. This is the narrative and or descriptive writing. It could be narrative, it could be descriptive. There are a choice of two questions, but as we've already talked about, that will not always mean that there's a narrative question and a descriptive question. There might be too narrative, there might be too descriptive. So you've got to know how to write in both styles. So we're basically looking at the mark scheme, breaking it down and looking at the skills required to achieve the top marks, the highest band. And what we're going to look at today is this phrase, varied and inventive use of structural features. Now, when you write a story or a descriptive piece, what tends to happen is you have lots of ideas and you just write. But it's important to think carefully about how you structure your writing, what happens where, and why you're doing that. And we talked briefly in the last video about some ideas to do with narrative and how you can structure your narrative writing, essentially following Freytag's pyramid, you know, having something exciting happen at the beginning, building up to this really tense moment, and then sort of finishing. That's one approach to how to structure your piece. But that wouldn't really, I think, hit that phrase from the Mark scheme which, as I go back, is varied and inventive use of structural features. Now, bearing in mind you're writing a story or a part of a story, there's not a lot you're going to be able to do with structure. So I think there's one really easy way to hit that top band and have that varied and inventive use of structural features when you're writing a narrative piece, which is to include a flashback. So to have your story taking place and then to have a paragraph where it goes back in time and um, you know we have this flashback narrative structure. In my ebook at mrbruff.com I've got an example of a story that I've written but here's a little section of it on screen so this is um, an idea of being um, on a desert island so we've got a paragraph here which is um, the, the character looking around we've got some dialogue a sort of description of, of what's happening and then this paragraph is a flashback. He remembered what waking up in the plane just as the screaming began. The captain had switched the lights off for the passengers to sleep, but they jolted into action, etc., etc. So this paragraph actually goes back in time. Now, when we have a flashback, it's good to position it at a time of great tension. Writers historically always do this. They have um, build-up of tension, things are getting sort of pretty scary, so it could be just before the climax of your story, and then a flashback. Not only does that heighten the tension because you just want to know, look, what's going on with the main thing, but it also adds important information and details to help you understand more of the characters perhaps as well. So that's what I think for narrative writing, to hit the top marks for structure. Yes, you should structure your story in a way that um, you think is is you know uh, interesting and you should probably follow something along the Freytag's pyramid model but in that you should try and add a paragraph which is a narrative flashback and that's going to help the examiner to see okay they're deliberately working on uh, structure here trying to be inventive trying to be creative always have your flashback as a separate paragraph um, you know, we, we change paragraph when we change topic, time, place, etc. But make sure it's very clear to the examiner, OK, we've gone back in time here. You know, you've got to make sure that what you're deliberately doing is structured in such a way that the examiner sees it very easily. You can read the rest of that story at um, in my ebook, Mr. Bruff's Guide to English Language, £3.99 at mrbruff.com or Amazon, and it contains over 100 pages and links to exclusive hidden videos, which you can only see if you buy the ebook. So that's how I think you can be inventive and creative with the structure in a narrative piece. What I'd like you to do, guys, is to put a comment in the comment section. How can we have that inventive structure? if we're writing a descriptive piece? How can we structure our work in such a way to hit that top band if it's descriptive? 